Welcome to Reflections, a program where we discuss values and virtues for the transformation of the individual and the society in general. I am Father George Husani, and I have with me once again in the studio our friend, Professor Nwana. And he is uh, the immediate past Deputy Vice Chancellor of Academics, University of Abuja, consultant pathologist. Prof, you're welcome once again. Father, thank you very much. Uh, yeah. in, in those yeah. days, pre COVID 19, I welcome people like this. <laughs> now, now, we do like this and say, Prof, welcome. <laughs> Good. So, this time, Prof, I want us to discuss, um, in the last one month, I have been reading a lot of material. Uh, some of them are called conspiracy theories, but others I read from solid experts, professors of medicine, professors of immunology, uh, um, uh, professors of virology, People who should know, but who have serious doubts about the, um, all that has been the official narrative in the COVID-19. Who have serious doubts? One, the issue of whether COVID-19, the, the Wuhan virus, whether it was uh, factory made, whether it was manipulated, whether the proteins were manipulated in, 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 that, uh, in that lab. Second, is whether there are powers, global interests, the politics, whether there is more politics than medicine in these things. I don't know, Prof, if you have been reading some of this kind of material, if you are exposed to some of this, and um, uh, what kind of questions should we be asking? You are a scientist, you are a pathologist. Uh, we saw what uh, the uh, pathologists in Italy did when they did the uh, autopsies and so on and so forth, and came out with their own narrative, slightly different from the earlier narrative. Now, as a scientist, these political insinuations, uh, the insinuations about, a, uh, about control, about some, some desire to control the global population, uh, some desire to create a problem and bring a solution create virus and bring the vaccination and uh, compel everybody. Are you, have you read some of this, Prof? Have, have you watched some of the videos? Have you read some of the things? And what do you, what are you and your colleagues, I'm sure you people have been chatting, what are you and your colleagues possibly making of some of these allegations? Well, once again, thank you, Father, for this opportunity to rub minds on these uh, challenges that have emerged the last couple of weeks and months. <coughs> As a matter of fact, I, I must confess that uh, we're dealing with a very unfortunate situation. Unfortunate situation. Yeah. Because ordinarily, the rest of the world should believe whatever is coming out of from medicine, science, and technology. That's what we have been living with. We have made advances in all these sectors for which the world is grateful. Very grateful. Not just to science, medicine, and technology, to but God. to God, who is the ultimate designer. Some of us are very saddened that in the situation we currently find ourselves, you are unable, you are handicapped, you're unable to tell the ordinary person, the lay person in medicine, science, and technology with any confidence What's going on? that this is what is happening. To give them hope, reassure them that the world is not about to evaporate. That's where we are. It's so sad. You've come from the angle, and to add to this pain, the World Health Organization, WHO, that should be in the lead appropriately in containing not just this pandemic, but any such disease outbreaks that threaten mankind, is currently on trial itself. The World Health Organization is on trial. On trial. Recently, the General the Assembly, the last General Assembly decided that it should be investigated, investigated along with China. 
it had never happened before. Who will bear these cards? Countries are pulling away. America has stopped funding. And not to, just a few days ago, President Trump wrote a four-page letter to the Director General of WHO, which I consider as a deadly testimonial. He merely took that organization and the DG to the cleaners. Countries are pulling away. You ask yourself, is this world this unfair? That other countries talk of a cure and WHO is saying it is not possible. Aha, this is, this is my own... What is going on? This is Give my it own a system. trial. Must it come from Europe or elsewhere before you accept it? Father, me and you know here that Dogoyaro used for treating malaria. For, from time immemorial. With lemongrass and all that. Yes. WHO is exposing his flanks and beginning to cast some question marks. Put question marks on its own credibility. And we are told that the Chinese doctor that died had left some notes. Yes. And the notes he left included ingredients that can be found in our lemongrass. You see, you, see, you begin to wonder if Madagascar says it has proved the cure. Test or whoever. It. Test it now. What is, it wrong, what is wrong with saying, bring it, let us quickly look at it. Yes. Because we have a challenge. People are dropping off like flies. Human lives. We are not talking of uh, ants. When I see some of those pictures of bed bodies being moved out, even as a pathologist, I say, ah, 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 what is going on? What is this? That is not to say, Father, like I've told you, that several children are not dying around here following undernutrition, diarrheal diseases, malaria. And malaria. Uh -huh. But this, since they have decided that COVID-19 is the only issue in the world today, what is this thing about paralysis, inability to do something? It has to be a vaccine. When will this vaccine pass all the tests and stages? And we are told that so it, we normally, wait. It, it normally takes yes, like 18 yeah. months. So we should wait till it arrives. So all of us should die. It puts a question mark everywhere. And, and, and the Of doubt. course, when you talk of the publications. Yes. In science and in medicine, you are supposed to communicate your research findings through journals, through journals, mm -hmm. peer-reviewed journals that have, you know, their credibility, yes. so that others can share, critique, do all that, and we keep making progress. Now we are having publications tearing each other down, leaving the rest of the world in the helpless confusion. Whither do we? Where are we headed? So much so that information transmitted. By somebody as retired monitor, you pull down from the internet. What is the what, what is going on? What's going on? If you disagree, superior argument can we see? So everything we do in science is about superior argument. Position. Why pull down disappear things? Must they sound and, and, good? And why trying to silence and yes, a scientist. A scientist. It's not done. Bring your stuff. Let us see. That is the stuff. That is the basis of human progress. But we are seeing a different thing this time. For me, the knockout punch is the fact that the WHO is now on trial. I am thoroughly panicked. Embarrassed. Yes, because what, at this point, so where would I run to? How did we... Okay. WHO. People are suddenly saying that the referee, the center referee, is, is, is we don't trust, we don't, we trust, don't him. trust him. That the judge is corrupt. That's what you are dealing with. America is raining hellfire brimstone. In Australia, everybody pulling away. In, drugs are being kept in countries. They don't have no movement of drugs. Everybody is holding on to their territory. Taiwan is close to China. No casualty. At all. The rest of the world, casualty. The figures rolling out for your country, with all due respect. I am afraid, Father, forgive me. I don't even want to look at them. And why do I say so? 
if Nigerians have an address, if every Nigerian has, has an, an address, address, and you say somebody has disappeared, I will then know that somebody disappeared. If we don't have address and we don't know how many we are, so we are not able to... I don't know what those <coughs> figures mean. Because you cannot tell me somebody disappeared. I cannot go to that address and confirm that this person went to hospital and did not make it. I can't place... Those are mere statistics. They are not for me. <laughs> the the reality. reality. Because we don't have address. Father, I don't know how many we are in my village. Do I know how many, I don't we, know are how many we are that are below five years in my village? I don't know those who are above 60, the elderly. I don't know those who have morbidities. Oh, yes, I'm telling you now. So, so all this our projections... thing about figure has cut it, the number has died, some have discharged. For me, it's, it's, it's tales by moonlight. Hmm. Hmm. Because if we say somebody has disappeared, and I go to that address. Father, doesn't it bother you that you put the Google map in your car and it takes you to an address in this country, in yes. this town? Yes. Yet, go to the population bureau. They don't have... They don't know who is living where or the street address. So we have the technology to know everyone and where you are. But we have refused to. For political reasons that predate our independence. If you don't get over it, they can continue talking what they like. When Americans and the Britons and the rest of Italians tell you somebody died, that person is not mere statistic. It's a, it's a known person. They can with even publish age, the photograph. Address, ID, passport, etc., etc. All the indices for identifying their citizen. They know who died. He has a name. He's not a number. He has a name. He or she has a name. He's not a number. That's why I say to you that as bad, for me as a medical doctor, I feel the pain of knowing that. What is all this? Same thing they did with HIV AIDS. Oh, people have died in Otuku everywhere, graves and symmetries. I just keep laughing. Who is this person that died? Can you categorize him properly? I don't know. Where does he live? His neighbor, his family, who is there? How did it happen? You saw some of the things on WhatsApp. A patient returning, recovering from COVID, and the neighbors came out cheering and clapping and thanking God in England. Yes. You saw it. Doctor being discharged. Yes. You saw it. We saw Boris Johnson being discharged. Yes. So how come we are not seeing our own? What is going on, Father? I rest my case. I mean, the, the, the thing is that um, we who are laymen in, in this circumstance are left completely confused. That is like I said, uh, because I invite uh, experts like you to the studio, I, I try to glance through some of those publications that are going on. And I, the more I read, the more I get confused. Because, uh, one, we are reading that there is some kind of agenda. In recent weeks in Nigeria, we now heard of some kangaroo arrangements to uh, get a, a legislation to replace the quarantine uh, law of Nigeria. And that legislation came in the most un unorthodox manner where the legislators said they, that they, they didn't have a copy of the legislation. And they got first reading, second reading, was going to third reading without the legislators having the, the copy. And then... Uh, People began to raise questions. What's going on here? What's going on here? And that legislation was to give powers, almost the power of life and death, to the people heading uh, NCDC. Uh, I mean, and give next to no power to the judiciary. Uh, and then I could be forced, I could be caught on the road and forced to receive an injection, a vaccination. What is going on? Um, I'm saying in your circles as experts, when you meet, whether it is on Zoom or wherever you meet as experts, as, do some of these things occur to your group to, to discuss that beyond the medical, beyond the core medical dimension, 
could politicians be interfering in what is supposed to be a medical problem? Well, uh, Father, we have been in a democracy since 1999. It presupposes that politics is governing our life. Responsible politics. I, I, I am sorry to note that this representation you are talking about, do they really represent anybody? The legislators? Yes. Do they really represent anybody? Because we see representatives elsewhere in the world. South Africa, Ghana, I'm not going to Europe, etc. Speak for their constituents. Yes. In consultation you know with their constituents. That whoever is speaking is in touch, not disconnected from his constituency or her constituency. I dare say that those people there speak for themselves and their pockets. Hmm. I feel the pain of knowing that that is not what it should be. We have seen the conduct of our elections. Yes. Before we start an election, we have tribunals. Last December, the British voted for their prime minister to have a five-year term against the backdrop of the Brexit issue. Mm -hmm. There was no election tribunal before they started for judges and lawyers to have a, a festival. They went to the polls. 12 hours later, they, announced. they knew who was their prime minister for the next five years. There was no election tribunal or appeal court or Supreme Court set up before they started voting. What does that tell you? How many of them there can legitimately claim that they won elections they are, and are representing me or you? We know what transpired. So, in, against that background of a disconnection or lack of responsibility to you, they can go ahead and do whatever they I don't want to imagine us what may have gone on for that type of rush to, to, to pull, pull out it. when there are so many pressing issues in this country that remain unattended to, that are touching our daily lives negatively. But here's one thing that suddenly they were galloping or moving at the speed of lightning. Father, in the context of Nigeria, uh, like they say, <laughs> something they inside. That is it. It's not out of any particular concern for you and I. There are many pressing issues on which they have refused to legislate or take position. Including health issues. Yes. So why this sudden speed of light? Answer the question. We know ourselves. They say in my place that you put on dress because of outsiders. Your people inside know you. Yes. They know who you are. I can't say more than that. I wish all of them luck. But so long as there is God, all of us will answer for what we are doing. To hurt every other person in this country. I mean, could it be, could it be that people could actually connive with people who don't mean well? For us. Father, your guess is as good as mine. Let us leave that matter. Because there are things that will come out eventually. There is nothing hidden under the sun. Oh, yes. Jesus said it now. Oh, yes. It's nothing hidden under the sun. It may be another decade. But this truth will come out both locally and internationally. And globally. It will come out. That is in the nature of human progress. Uh, and it is in the nature of truth yes. that you cannot... The truth will always... Cannot, yes. yes. It may look like it is slow or crawling, but eventually it will overtake the lies. It will overtake. We have assurance, we have God's assurance on that. Now, now that um, we have discussed this dimension, let me ask you a personal question. Yes, Father. On a personal level, uh, you have worked for many years, got to the top level of your career, I mean, uh, unless, unless you become 
v VC or president of Nigerian Doctors Association or whatever, you have reached the top mm -hmm. level of your... The will of, of God your, will always prevail. The, uh, now, what do you feel about Nigeria? What do you feel about Nigeria? I mean, I, know, I can imagine the dreams you would have had from secondary school, going to read medicine, going to be a doctor, going to teach medicine, the dreams you would have had of a better society, of a better healthcare, and so on and so forth. At this age, you are going towards the end of your working career. Yes. How do you, that's why I say it's a personal question, how do you feel? Well, Father, I, you know, the history of Nigeria is inevitably intertwined with our own personal lives. Because that's your country of birth. I, I, I don't want to say I have regret, but I, I, I have a sense of disappointment. I went to secondary school, Christ the King College on Nature, Mission School. I went on from there. I passed entrance exam to study medicine in Ibado and in Soka and all that. And I went to Ibado, Nigeria's premier medical school, purely on merit. I sat for an entrance exam and passed, and I was admitted into UI. Nobody sought to know my origin. I made an exam, and I arrived in Ibado. When I got to Ibado, I met a cross-section of Nigerians from all parts who made it. On merit. On merit. Such language like quota, uh, geographical, whatever, was not there for us. Greek. It was Greek. Ibado yes. sat, sat an entrance, you passed, you arrived. You went to work. They gave you a thorough packaging, quality education. You look forward to the future. There was something to look up to. And I left school, moved into the world. I had never worked in my own state where I come from. I have never worked in my state where I come from. You won't believe it. Never for one day. My career has been outside my education, apart from secondary school, Christ the King College. Suddenly you see your country shrinking, shrinking into localities. At the time I was undergraduate in Ibadan, vice chancellors could come from anywhere. anywhere. During Obasanjo, he even went around to post vice chancellors in a strange way before they got the autonomy these days. You could become vice chancellor, you could become a teacher, anything. The sky was open. But as we speak, all the so called federal universities have actually become appropriated by their localities. Hmm. If I get to Ibadan today, the student population and mix tells me the damage that has happened. So the Federal University in Lokoja, my, my state, uh, appropriated. Uh -huh. so, if so the population, the student mix and staff tells you what has that happened? we're in a reverse gear development. The meaning of a university means universal. Open. You then see the horror of admissions being abused by chief executives. It's where. And the horror of appointment, appointment of uh, senior officers. Senior officers. Everything is a battleground for testing ethnicity and religion. This we never had growing up. That a man gets a job because of where he's born or his religion. There were instances in this country that vice chancellors were being... Uh, a program for appointment and they said sorry i don't want it i want to remain in the classroom and face my job i don't want that distraction it happened in this country in this country I, I can imagine today traditional rulers religious leaders ethnic champions are uh, lobbying draw, drive the process so what do you do children are disappearing all over the world when young students leave medical school and university, no jobs, no future. Post NYC, no future. So they want to even repeat NYC so that they will have small good themselves and be eating something. They are disappearing and we don't see anything wrong. That the cream of your future living and living. is going elsewhere to service them. If you go to the United States, especially, even Britain, 
and see Nigeria's contribution to the workforce. Wait now, there was, let me break through, there oh. was in the, a few days ago, there was a short video that went viral of a Nigerian doctor that had COVID-19, I don't know if you saw it, Nigerian doctor that had COVID-19 and when he was discharged from the ICU, Professor, professor of uh, colorectal surgery, good, they said they could not let him die because he's irreplaceable, irreplaceable, Nigerian. Irreplaceable, that was the word. And when I heard him speak, he didn't speak with British accent, oh, meaning yes. that he didn't school here. here. Yes. School here. The one he researching on the drug in the U.S. was my junior by 10 years in Ibadan. Femi Taiwo. They left a grant for him. A hundred million. When we see those students disappear, they come to you to write a referee letter and all that. You do it with anguish. Because they should have been here. When I was leaving school, I never imagined that to run away from Nigeria would be an option. Because here, you had it all open. I trained in Ibadan. Traveled around the world. Qualified, did my residency, came and took a job happily. It's a pity. Can you, do you have, for our viewers, do you have something more positive to say, to close? Some, some hope, some word of hope. The, what I... Can say is that uh, in the Nigerian style, I pray to God to forgive us. Amen. He, ha he has to forgive us and give us a sense of direction. Amen. For what politicians are doing and what we are currently witnessing, our country is disappearing in installments. I hope we'll be able to salvage it. And I hope that the young people will do what they must. To claim their own country. Yes. The, you know, President Kennedy made that immortal comment. Do not ask what your country is. Well, yeah. what you can do for your country. Yes. Your country has to own you first. Yes. Our country doesn't own the younger people. They have no allegiance to it. Especially in the face of rabid ethnicity and religious divisions. Hmm. It does not encourage. We pray that since we are supposed to be religious people we claim to be religious yeah. people may god help us reclaim our country by his grace may god take our country off the ethnic and religious fanatics that are tearing us apart so that we may become one people again so that a sector like your own the health sector may begin to grow again education i mean education because this thing that is education it's health key. it's not supposed to be by ethnic cleavage I, it's about standards Go to America, you see them, Nigerians, my yes. classmates, a good number of them relocated. It's not as if a choice they really like. But if your country does not have value for you or looks at you, look at where you come from or which faith you profess before they decide whether you are worth anything, uh, then you might as well. I spoke to a young person who said to me, Prof, you know something? I would rather be a second class citizen elsewhere than be told in my country, my supposed country, that I'm second class, that I am second class because of my faith and where I was born. I did not determine my DNA or parentage. It happened. So I would rather be a second class citizen elsewhere and know my limits and enjoy the basic things of life, work hard, be rewarded accordingly, die and be buried there. There's no special, nothing special. But to come here and be facing humiliation, because I am born into a certain locality and I profess a certain faith, it's too much for me to manage. I think we definitely, Prof, we need to have a, a, a segment on this particular dimension kind of discussion because the, you, are, you have touched on the real problem. So our real problem is not lack of, capa it's lack of capacity. Uh, our real problem is not lack of resources. It is politics. Very negative very yes. negative kind of politics. Yes. Reverse gear reverse, development. Yes. Reverse. You cannot accelerate with reverse gear. No. Nobody can. Yes. It will be destructive. Or, 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 or you have your legs on the on the yes. on the brake. Yes. And then you think that you can move. No. Where? Reverse gear, you move. It's destruction. You do, it can't happen. On that note, we will bring this segment to an end. I wanted to see if we can end with something positive. All I will say to our young people is that you can change it. I'll tell our young people that you can change it. Do not join the adult uh, uh, population in this reverse gear. 
And the way to do it is to see the next person as your brother, as your sister. We belong to the same country. On this note, we will bring this uh, program to an end. And uh, I have been speaking with Professor uh, Nwana, uh, from, former Deputy Vice Chancellor of Academics, University of Abuja, and consultant pathologist. And I believe we shall need to have him again in the studio to discuss this dimension of the bad politics we have run in this country that is not making us progress. May the Lord help us to come up with good leaders, yes. with good stakeholders Amen. that will lead our country to the promised land. Amen. Amen. Thank you.